Hey, Tom. How surprised were you to see Rashawn there at 13? Uh, you know, once uh, – I'll tell you what, our pro scouting staff does a great job knowing the league and putting a report together on, you know, each team's needs, what their tendencies are, what their schemes are. We try and, you know, go through some different exercises to kind of predict where guys may go, and it helps us with draft management. And, and they did a great job with this one. You know, once he got past – pick eight, uh, we felt pretty good that, that he would get to us at that point. So um, just a great job of preparation and planning by the, by the pro staff to kind of get a feel for where different guys may go. Like, look, we're not 100% and I'm predicting it, obviously, but to get a feel. Um, so uh, it just helps with the draft management part of it of trying to get the players you, you'd like to select. So that worked out perfect there. So hats off to the pro guys. Lewis Clark and Regis Eller and Dennis Abraham did a great job uh, kind of setting the uh, – setting the table for us there. Uh, where does Rashawn fit into the roster? Is he, is he a tackle to you? Uh, he obviously has some positional flexibility. What, where do you sort of view him? A tackle. And then did you guys consider at any point uh, a trade up? Panay Sewell was falling and you guys obviously needed a tackle. Was that, was that a consideration? Did you have any talks about that? I mean, I don't know who was falling or rising, um, but uh, you know, we had scenarios to go up. We had scenarios to stay and pick, and we had scenarios to, to trade back. So uh, uh, it worked out very well to be patient, sit and pick, and, and uh, select uh, Rashawn, and away we go. Rashawn mentioned that you guys didn't talk to him or have any Zoom calls with him. Is that is that accurate? A lot of a lot of work we did with him was early on in the process. Obviously, he didn't play this year in 2020. Um, but uh, yeah, we we had all the information we needed on on Rashawn. Just, just considering you guys didn't have any one-on-one -on -one conversations with him, did, why did you guys like feel comfortable? Like, what what about the process led you to feel like he was a, a good fit? I uh, know. I mean, we've we've had conversations with him, but um, it's the same with every other prospect. You have to put it all together, to put a big puzzle together. So, um, obviously, he didn't have any any game film from this year, but he had three years of of game film at Northwestern, three year starter there. Um, you know, all the background from Northwestern and all the work our scouts do. Um, I'll tell you what, Pat Fitzgerald does a tremendous job at that program at Northwestern. Um, the culture they've created there, um, the players that come out of there, they're, they're football smart, they're tough. Um, this does a great job with that program. So to see a player like Rashawn come out of there, um, you know, you, you know he's coming from, from a good place and, and been coached well, coached hard and coached well, and they won a lot of games there. Um, but no, we did, did a lot of work on him throughout the whole process and perfect fit for us. Thanks. Cam. Hey, good after. Uh, good evening, Tom. Um, question for you. Just kind of follow up on on Pop's question here. Do you personally need to talk to the the prospects or your your draft prospects before you draft them, or do you really rely on your draft your scout team? Yeah, I rely a lot on the scouts and the coaches. Um, you know, our scouts. We probably, especially this year, just because it's a little bit different. Um, we're able to talk to more players, but we, we, we'll talk with everybody on the draft board at one point or another from in the last 12 months. Um, and then the coaches get involved with that as well. Um, you know, do I have to talk to every single player? No, not, not really. I, I really, I trust our scouts um, and I trust our coaches too. The coaches do a lot of the football work with, with the players. Our scouts do a lot of the background and, and character work. Um, I can't get to everybody. We have a great staff that I trust 100%. Um, and certainly this year, um, just not being able to get face to face with very many players other than the players of the senior bowl. Um, you know, I got lucky enough to see uh, a little bit of Rashawn uh, two years ago. Um, I was at the game they played against Iowa, um, looking at some other players. Didn't at that point, didn't know he would be opting out for the next year, but he was a prospect at that point, obviously as a, as a junior. So, um, but, I, but you know, I can't talk to him at those games, but, uh, but yeah, just a great amount of work by a lot of people in this, this whole organization to put the whole thing together. Uh, sounds good. Um, last week, I asked you about talking to players who opted out clearly. And you, you were clear to say it was a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. What did you what convinced you that him opting out would still he still be a valuable player for the team? He still had that love. He still had the passion for football and that you would draft. And what convinced you of that? Yeah, like I said last week, I don't think it's really up to us to judge each individual's uh, decision on opting in or opting out. So um but when we go back to what, how he's been brought up, his family, high school coaches, college coaches, 
Um, he's made of the right stuff, and, and I think you'll see a little bit of that when he gets in here, and you'll see a lot more of it you know, the longer he's here. Um, he loves to play the game. He's very smart, um, knows football, um, been very well coached, and um, you know, we're just really excited to uh, tell you what, last year, last year was fun celebrating the picks at home with my family, but nothing beats the excitement of a draft room when, when you draft a player that we're excited about, and your head coach is there, and ownership is there and all your scouts are in there and and uh yeah there's just there's just nothing better than that it, last year was was fun but like i said it does not top uh you know when you do this experience with everybody here in the building yeah i'm sure that was exhilarating uh last one for me um does him being a second generation athlete is that <laughs> icing on the cake do you look at that at all um in the process and you just or essentially is that icing on the cake for you guys a little bit i mean uh you guys saw in the background how big his dad is um and I do remember him as a, as a power forward and, you know, a good NBA player. But, uh, yeah, it plays a little bit into it. Obviously, he comes from good stock. Um, you know, his dad was talented enough and big enough to be a, an, an NBA player and a very good one at that. Um, so the, the genes are in there. And, you know, part of playing left tackle or playing any tackle, left or right, um, is to have really light feet and body control and balance and leverage. And all those things go into, you know, being a basketball player, especially being a power forward especially when his dad played. Game's changed a little bit since then. But, uh, um, but yeah, some of those same traits, the quick feet to put them down and, um, you know, the awareness and leverage, you know, it's all that same things. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and last one for me, Todd. I know it's just one more for me. Um, your, your trait, I believe it was you, you said last week as well that you're looking at the players and you're looking at tackles, not necessarily left or right tackles. You're just looking at tackles. Does the, his versatility allow you to consider switching them left or right and you make that decision later on? Yeah, I mean, I think he could play left or right. He could probably play left guard or right guard. You know, he hasn't played guard. He's always been a tackle, but uh, at least at the college level. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, he's played mostly a left tackle, so that's where he'll kind of go right now. But he could play anywhere, probably up front, um, but certainly left or right. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Fernando. Tom, it sounds like you watched a little bit of uh, Reggie's uh, film as a power forward. I'm a big NBA guy, so, yeah. <laughs> um, he, Rashawn feels like a lot of people kind of pointed to that Chase Young game at Ohio when he, they faced Ohio State. Do you, did you feel like that was a game that you guys looked at as well? I mean, that's the great thing about playing in the Big Ten. I mean, between Ohio State's defensive front, including Chase Young, uh, Iowa last year with, with Epineza, who was drafted by Buffalo, um, and they have a couple guys this year in the draft that are good players. So, um, yeah, he faced some rushers in that conference last year, and uh, he held up very well. Um, so that's that's uh, you know it makes the uh, makes the projection a little bit easier because you see him going against top talent in, in that conference. And I just named a couple, but there are more than that. Uh, so that certainly helps uh, as part of the uh, scout, scouting process. What made Rashawn Slater the perfect pick for the Los Angeles Chargers? Well, he was a good pick. I don't. You know, perfect is a tough word to throw around there, Fernando. But, uh, no, we're excited about it. He fits us on and off the field. He's a high-level player, very athletic tackle. He'll fit in the scheme we're going to run extremely well, which is a big part of when we draft these players is how they're going to fit exactly what we're going to do. Um, you know, I don't want to just concentrate on the passing game. I mean, he's a very good run blocker. I mean, he can cut off defensive ends. Um, he can reach people. He can get to the second level, which is the linebackers, with really good speed and angles. That's all part of your run game, and that has to get better as well. It's not just protecting our quarterback. It's being able to run the ball when we have to run the ball. So he's a pretty balanced player, um, which is why he's a first-round draft pick. But um, the fact that he can really excel in both areas, uh, again, that's why he's a first-round draft pick. Do you feel like with all the selections or with all the, the signings that you made for the offensive line plus uh, Rashawn, it was not just for uh, protecting Herbert but also for running the ball? Yeah, it's, just to, it's to improve our offense. Um, yeah, it's just not, I mean, obviously protecting the quarterback is a big part of their job, but, but uh, we got to be able to run the ball when we have to run the ball um, in all areas of the field. So he's going to help out with that as well. Thank you, Tom. Joe. Tom, I know you were with the scouts and ownership and everybody, but did the surfboard make it into the draft room? It did, Joe. Yeah, we got it in. Um, we put it in the back and uh, yeah, it's doing very well right now. Good, good, good. Um, 
Just how much does his versatility just along all the offensive line help? Because he he said he played guard in high school right. and kind of was recruit, recruited to play guard at, at Northwestern before he uh, ended up at tackle. Well, it's certainly a bonus. Um, you never know what could happen in a game if players get hurt that he can bounce around. Um, but uh, when you're as, as athletic as he is and as strong as he is, um, yeah, he does have some versatility, um, but we see him as a tackle right now. Okay, and then um, when when Sewell wasn't taken at five by Cincinnati, because I know you said starting at eight, you, you had a good feeling that he that Slater might fall to you, to you guys. But did you think also when Cincinnati went with Chase at five that all of a sudden those tackles would start start dropping? Uh, no, not not really. I mean, again, you, you guys with the drop and the risers, I mean, these guys kind of go where they go. But um, like I said, that, that eighth pick was kind of a pivotal spot for us. Um, once he passed eight, I just couldn't see anybody taking him. You never know, but uh, you play the odds game. We'd rather not trade up if we didn't have to, and that's where we you know, stayed patient with it, You know, trusted the information we have, and it worked out. Kind of surprised there weren't that many trades in the top 10. Um, you know, I hadn't really thought about it. Um, I mean, typically if you're going to trade in the top 10, it's just, it costs a lot. It's a big premium on that. So if you're going to do it, it's usually for a quarterback. Um, and, uh, so they kind of went off the way, the way they went off. So it just, it just costs a lot of draft capital to move up in the top 10. Um, even if it's just from like four or five picks away, it just costs a lot. So not totally surprised there weren't a lot of trades up there. Um, but you know, every year is a little bit different.